Okay, uh, in this uh, uh, chapter, uh, we talk about the basic knowledge about elasticity. Uh, actually, uh, totally we have five chapters uh, in this semester. Uh, the first chapter uh, uh, includes some uh, basic lo uh, knowledge. Uh, in section 1.1, we talk about stress, okay? And we can write uh, the stress as a, a matrix or a tensor. Uh, this is a very basic knowledge, so I just uh, skip the details, okay? Uh, sigma 1.1 one, one is the, the normal stress, sigma 1.2 is the shear stress. Uh, so on and so forth. And then we, uh, we have this relation called the Cauchy traction uh, formula, uh, which tells us that uh, using the stress tensor, we can relate the traction on some surface. Okay? Uh, this, uh, mathematically, uh, this equation can be expressed in terms of this form. Okay? This is the uh, traction vector. This is the stress matrix. This is the normal vector. Okay, and then uh, let us talk, look at a example, uh, which is a beam. Uh, we have a, a little material surface uh, on this beam in the left hand side. Huh? Uh, on this surface, uh, we have a, a unit normal. Okay, we um, um, denote it as a little n. And also on this surface, we, uh, we have some uh, external force or internal force, uh, some applied forces. Okay, we denote these forces as T vector. Okay, so on a surface, material surface, we have two vectors. One is the normal vector, another one is the traction vector. Okay, now uh, how this traction vector related to the stress? Let us look at the material point. Uh, at the right hand side. We can draw the material point as a polymer. Okay? Uh, the inclined surface uh, of this polymer um, uh, is drawing here. Uh, the unit normal vector is like this, little n. And on this uh, inclined surface, uh, we have the inclined plane, we have the uh, uh, applied forces, uh, which is denoted as T vector. Okay, and according to equilibrium, um, or uh, balance of linear momentum, uh, this traction force will be uh, related to the stress component on the uh, other three surfaces. Understand? Uh, let me uh, explain uh, this point in detail. This uh, traction vector will be related to the forces on on the other three surfaces. Okay, we have one surface, two surfaces, three surfaces. Every surfaces have uh, three components. Okay, and according to equilibrium, uh, the traction on this inclined surface will be uh, balanced with this uh, stress components on other three surface, uh, three surfaces. So uh, see here. Uh, the stress component is sigma 1, 3, sigma 2, 3, sigma 3, 3, just like here. Sigma 1, 3, sigma 2, 3, sigma 3, 3, okay? And sigma 2, 2 is here. So, uh, in this way, uh, the traction on this inclined surface is related to the stress tensor here, 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 okay? Now, we want to apply uh, this uh, Cauchy traction formula uh, to calculate the uh, traction boundary condition. Uh, means that we want to apply this, this formula, T equal to stress times little n. We want to apply this formula to describe the traction boundary condition. What is traction boundary condition? Let me uh, remind you, okay? Uh, look at an a example. For example, we have a, we have a dam uh, of a reservoir to save water, 
Okay, we have a reservoir. Uh, in order to to save water, we must uh, build a dam. Okay, to keep the to water. Uh, suppose the inter uh, the cross section of this dam is a uh, parabola. Okay, the equation of this parabola is uh, x2 equal to 10 minus x1 square. Uh, here x2 is y, x1 is x. Like see, x1 is the horizontal axis, x2 is the vertical axis. So we also can say this, uh, say that uh, this formula is y equal to 10 minus x square. Okay, or x2 equal to 10 minus x1 square. Okay, this is the cross section of a dam. Okay, on this um, uh, parabola, we have some unit normal of uh, every point. Okay, and then uh, suppose, uh, suppose uh, we have some water pressure uh, applied or along this parabola. Okay, uh, and also uh, on these two other two boundaries, the displacements are zero. Okay, see on this boundary u equals zero, v equals zero. On this boundary, u equals zero, v equals zero, means that the dam is fixed, okay? If the dam uh, can be moved, you know, of, of course it is too dangerous, so we require that the dam is fixed here. here. The dam is also fixed here. And uh, so these two, uh, along these two boundaries, the boundary condition are a lot, are a lot, traction boundary condition. They are a displacement boundary condition, means that the boundary on which the displacements are prescribed. Okay, how about the right hand side? Along this parabola, there are some water pressure. So we have some traction boundary condition here. So in this, in this example, we understand what is traction boundary condition now. Means that along a boundary, some traction is applied, okay? Uh, in this example, some uh, water pressure is applied. Uh, 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 it is obvious that water pressure have low component in the x2 direction, okay? So t2 equals zero. It has only a uh, horizontal direction. So t1 equal to minus five uh, x1. I made a, mix, a mistake here. Please uh, do some correction. Don't copy 10 minus. Erase 10, erase minus sign. Means that the pressure T1 equal to minus 5x1 only. Minus 5x1, okay? I make some mistake. Okay? So um, we have some horizontal uh, uh, forces uh, applied uh, along this uh, boundary. Okay? So this is the uh, traction boundary condition. Okay, let us uh, uh, look at some uh, details of the mathematical uh, calculation. We have the parabola like this here. x2 equal to 10 minus x1 squared. We copy it uh, over here. And then we, we, uh, we write this equation as f equals zero. Well, okay, but we remove uh, this uh, we, we, we move this term to the left hand side, this term into the left hand side, and to make this equation equal zero. And then we say that this is a function f. Then we have f equal zero. So this equation is equivalent to this equation. Okay, and then we take the gradient uh, uh, operator. Okay, gradient f equal to partial f partial x1 i plus f partial x2 j. Why we do this? Because uh, the gradient of f is just the normal vector, okay? See, along a surface or a curve, we have some normal vector. How to compute? The, that is, we need to compute the gradient of f in order to get the normal vector, okay? So, uh, gradient f equal to partial f, partial x1, partial f, x2, i, and j. And then we put f, the function here, over here. The function here, over here. You know, partial f, partial x1 equal to 2x1. Partial f, partial x2, here equal 1. So in this way, we get the gradient f. That is, we get the um, normal vector. 
Now we want to make the normal vector uh, into a unit normal vector. Means that the length of the normal vector equal to one. Okay. So we first calculate the length. Okay. The the absolute value of the vector is like this. See, we have the component two x one here, two x one square plus one x uh, one square, and then take the square root, and then we get the length of the vector. Okay. And then divide the vector by the length, we get the unit uh, normal vector. Okay, so we put this over here and the length here, and then we get uh, we get the unit normal vector like this. Uh, also, we want to remind you uh, this uh, vector uh, is defined uh, over the uh, par uh, parabola. So here, x one square can be replaced by x two. Okay, like this, because x1 square equal to 10 minus x2. Okay, so we x1 square uh, replaced by 10 minus x2, we get this one. Okay, we get this one. So um, we can express this in terms of x1 or x2, up to you. Okay, um, now we can also uh, rewrite uh, this vector form as a, a column vector, like this. Okay, and also the traction vector uh, can be uh, expressed as this traction vector equal to t1, t2 and then t2 equals 0 because uh, we don't have um, vertical component for the water pressure and also we have some uh, horizontal component of the water pressure it, it is the uh, pressure so it is minus minus 5x1 please we, uh, erase 10 uh, minus here don't copy this one huh? Minus five x one. This the the uh, pressure here, horizontal pressure. Okay. So we have T, we have N. Okay. We have the normal vector N. We have the T here. Then we can calculate the traction bounding condition like this. Okay. So we have the T here. We have the stress here. We have the N here. Okay, so we uh, multiply this, uh, this uh, low vector to this column vector to get this one. This low vector to this column vector to get this one. And then this equation equal to this copy here. This equation equal to this copy here. These are two traction boundary conditions, TBC. Okay, T it stands for traction. Okay, uh, we have two bound uh, traction boundary condition along the curve x two equal to ten minus x one square. This is the complete form of the uh, traction boundary conditions. Okay, um, so uh, what uh, what is the physical meaning of this uh, traction boundary condition? Let us look at the picture uh, along the dam. Huh? Uh, on this dam, or along the surface of the dam, uh, we have the traction T1, T2, okay? T2 equals zero. Huh? Uh, and also we have the material point uh, 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 along this uh, surface. Okay, see a little bit get inside the dam. We have the traction component like this, sigma 1, 1, sigma 2, 2, uh, we draw it right here, sigma 1, 1, sigma 2, 1, sigma 2, 2, sigma 1, 2, uh, we, so a little bit inside the dam, we have the material point, and we have the stress component uh, on the horizontal and the vertical surfaces, like this, and then on the incline surface, we have the traction, T1 equal to minus 5x1, T2 equals zero, okay, uh, and then these two uh, traction uh, uh, component can be related to the stress component uh, inside the dam. Uh, inside the dam, okay. This is the meaning uh, of the uh, uh, of the bound uh, traction boundary conditions, okay.